Hello and welcome to our program. Our guest today is author Ashwin Sanghi. Ashwin, whose latest book, The Rosable Line, has been re-released, seems to have mastered the art of mystery, history, religion and intrigue. Let me introduce you to him. Ashwin, welcome to our studio. It's a pleasure to be here, Gora. The Rosable Line, uh, very well written and also just re-released. So how did you manage to choose this subject for a first book? It, it's an intoxicating subject. It's one of those where uh, you, you read something and it's one of those subjects that you want to explore more and more. Uh, but it's probably not the ideal topic to take for a first book, for a first time novelist. to him. Uh, so there were several books on the subject actually. There were about 25 or 30 books which had already been written mm -hmm. about the possibility of either Jesus having spent his missing years in India or the possibility of Jesus having returned to India after the crucifixion, having survived the crucifixion. Uh, I found this fascinating. I just started reading up everything that I could. And uh, so this was not something which uh, happened one day. It was something that took several years. Uh, it was only around 2005 that I said that, you know, there's so much material there, but why isn't someone bringing this material into the realm of popular fiction. Uh, because the best way of being able to educate someone on any topic is to popularize it. So tell me, do you think of this as a work of fiction or faction? Because there's so many facts which have also been brought into the plot. As an author, I think what appeals to me mm -hmm. is a fiction that sounds like fact. Uh, I think increasingly, for example, in, in the media, we nowadays want to hear fact that sounds like fiction uh, because it's more interesting. So I think the, the fun mm -hmm. uh, in, in these sort of books is that you rarely know when you are switching from fact to fiction and from fiction to fact. And that's what makes for an interesting read. Uh, of course, people ask me, well, is this fact or is this fiction? Well, honestly speaking, I prefer to call it fiction because fiction allows me the liberty of being able to give as wide an interpretation to the facts as I like. Okay. Uh, when you're writing within the realm of fact or non-fiction, you have to be exceptionally cautious about what you say. But also to state something as fact and something which touches so many sentiments across yes. religions is also uh, strewn with other complications and I of think we would not like to get involved in those. Also. So in fact, I must tell you honestly, uh, a lot of people would be a little concerned or worried that, oh, you know, this book could be a divisive book. No, in fact, it's a uniting book. It's a unifier. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you read it uh, till the last page, you realize that there is just so much more that we have in common. Uh, so the focus has been to focus on the commonalities rather than focusing on those things that separate or divide. Okay. Because you've, you've traveled across most of the major religions of the world. Absolutely. And it's also been, I think, somewhere a fine line as to not to be judgmental, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, b because I, uh, when I went through the process of researching uh, this book, I realized that uh, actually it, it makes no sense to be judgmental. Um, when, you, when you see the, uh, f to, to give you an example, uh, if we take uh, the patriarch of Ju Judaism, Abraham, uh, we, we know for a, uh, that most historians peg uh, Abraham to be around roughly 3000 odd BC, which is about roughly 5000 years ago, and that he lived probably in Mesopotamia, uh, modern day Iraq. Uh, what is interesting to note is that if you look at the Sumerian civilization of that time in Mesopotamia, uh, they already were moving towards Zoroastrianism. And if you compare the ancient scriptures of the Zoroastrians, Avesthan, mm -hmm. and if you, the Gathas, mm -hmm. of Avest, which are written in Avesthan, and on, on the other hand, if you compare the Rig Veda, you'll find that they are virtually identical. Now, what is even more interesting is that if you were to look at uh, our Hindu scriptures, uh, you'll find that there are the Asurs, and there are devas. And right. on the other hand, if you look at uh, the uh, gathas, you'll find that there are, there are the daivas and there are the ahuras. Now, essentially, it was one and the same people. 
the connections were very very strong mm -hmm. uh, the trade routes between Mesopotamia and India did exist uh, so honestly speaking to be judgmental doesn't make sense in fact what you need to simply look at is hey this was this was these were the same people these were one and the same people uh, and the common origin is what is of more interest to me uh, and that is what in fact encouraged me uh, to explore the subject a lot more during the course of your research it's a very very well researched book did you come across certain other things which you wanted to probably spin off which were fact you know, yeah. and state and probably come across as shorter stories and yes. and kind of little, uh, you know, sublets Absolutely. from the Roosevelt line. We'll talk about that. And of course, your other forthcoming book. Right now, we're going for a short break. Stay with us. We're in conversation with author Ashwin Sanke. Ashwin, during the research for the Roosevelt line, what else did you discover which was interesting? You know, I... Uh, I think what was the fun bit about the Rosabai line is if you don't focus too much on trying to read it as a story but as a series of side trips, a series of explorations which happen while you are reading the main story. Uh, so for example, I mean, uh, uh, we, I, I spoke briefly about the concept of Abraham, mm -hmm. uh, the, the patriarch of Judaism. Uh, but you know, for me, it was always very curious that if I was to take the word Abraham and I take the A out of Abraham and I put it at the end of Abraham, I land up with Brahma. Wow. Now, for me, that was just curious. I can't explain it. I'm not a historian or a scholar, but for me, that's something which is worth exploring. So it forms a little nugget in my book. Um, similarly, for example, there is a, there is a very um, small village in the south of France where uh, they celebrate a festival every year. It is, to, uh, it is actually in memory of a little boat which arrived there sometime in 42 AD. And in 42 AD, it is believed that a boat came to that particular village where Mary Magdalene uh, got off along with a dark-skinned daughter. And that daughter uh, had the name of Sarah. And every year, there is a festival which is celebrated called La Sara Kali. Uh, now, for me, as a Hindu, the name La Sara Kali is very interesting because La is the beginning of Lakshmi, mm -hmm. Sara is the beginning of Saraswati, and Kali, of course, is Kali. Uh, again, all can't Hindu, explain it. All Hindu deities, all Hindu goddesses. Yes. So I can't explain it. Uh, but again, it becomes something fascinating for me, which I definitely want to explore. So I guess writing as a, as a fiction novelist gives me that freedom to explore. Uh, for example, the, the war that uh, King Ashoka fought in Kalinga, 285 BC. And after the war, he went out into the town and he realized the destruction that he had um, he had created. There were there were over one lakh people di uh, dead. True. And uh, he said, "Well, enough of war. Now I'm going to spread my message of peace." Now we we have learned that in our Indian history classes. But what is more interesting for me is the fact that once he converted to Buddhism, he actually sent out his messengers to multiple countries, which included Egypt. And uh, the, the, the ruler of Egypt at that time, uh, Ptolemy, mm -hmm. was the one who received these Buddhist ambassadors, these Buddhist monks, who landed up uh, in the court as messengers of peace, which goes to uh, establish the fact that 285 years before Christ, Buddhism had already entered Egypt. So why is it strange that Jesus Christ's teachings should have been influenced by Buddhism. Uh, because even if we do not believe that he spent his missing years in India, but the Bible does tell us that he fled to Egypt. Yes. So I'm, it, it's highly unlikely that he would not have been exposed to those very teachings. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, for example, the concept of the Nag Hammadi finds, the Gnostic Gospels which have been discovered, 
there are so many uh, gospels which uh, do not form the four canonical gospels uh, so those again are extremely interesting because they again establish uh, the extent of eastern mysticism as it were mm -hmm. on even early christians uh, so for example the concept of reincarnation was very much alive amongst early christians it was only during the first council of constantinople that the concept of reincarnation was banned and it became heretical to talk about it so um, if if one looks at the the sermon on the mount of jesus christ uh, that you know when they discovered the dead sea scrolls they realized that most of the beatitudes in the uh, sermon on the mount uh, were actually had already been written about a uh, prior to the times of jesus right that's true so some of the sections in the book are fairly hard hitting this murder it's gruesome yeah. so uh, and mixing religion with that yes so did you find a dichotomy somewhere there uh, in uh, on 9/11 uh, well it was a terrorist attack but on, at the end of the day it had its roots in a certain belief in a certain thought process so uh, to my mind uh, it was very interesting to be able to bring in that element uh because in itself the story about uh Jesus Christ having spent his missing years in India or the story about him having survived the crucifixion and possibly having settled down in India these are stories that have already been written about the the more interesting question is that what if what if he did survive what if he did come to kashmir what if he is buried at rozabal what if he left a bloodline in the recent years there have been people who have actually claimed to be of the lineage of Jesus Christ in Kashmir mm -hmm. uh and i found that also extremely fascinating that well here, here is someone a modern day contemporary individual who says that i can trace my roots back to Jesus Christ uh of course there are multiple uh, sources within Kashmir which point to the presence of Jesus Christ there Mm -hmm. we may choose to believe them we may choose to disbelieve them my effort in this book has been that i'm presenting you with the information you make up your own the mind choice is yours because yeah. i i don't want to push anyone into what in, into a certain uh, predetermined pattern of thinking that's no fun finally and also let it be for what it is Absolutely. why should controversy be uh, the reason why people should read it they should Absolutely. read it just for the pure pleasure of reading it Absolutely you've you hit know? the nail on the head so Uh, f for example i have brought in the references uh, uh to give you an example the, you know the the hindus have 18 historical books which are known as the purans mm -hmm. uh of these one is the bhavishya mahapuran uh and unlike a lot of the other religious documents this the 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 dating of the puran is pretty accurate because we know that it was authored by the poet suta sometime around 115 ad and there is a specific pas passage in the bhavishya mahapuran which talks about uh, king shalivahan going up to the mountains and coming across this holy man who looks positively radiant and he says who are you and he says i am isa and i have been exiled from my own country and uh, this entire passage i have rep reproduced it word for word in the book uh, similarly for example you have the shankaracharya mandir um in shinagar uh, which at one point of time used to be known as the takht e suleiman uh and on the steps of the shankracharya mandir there are four persian inscriptions which talk about yusuf asaf or the leader of the healed uh and of course as we know jesus was very famous for his healing powers yes. so uh in my book i have act, uh, you know attributed the fact that yusuf asaf leader of the healed was none other than the greatest healer of all time jesus okay. christ okay uh so i think for anyone who is looking for uh to, to find fault with this book they can find many mm. uh i have left myself open to that but for those who are really looking at it as a as a opportunity to explore the subject a joyous exploration i i think it's yeah. fascinating ashwin may you carry on such wonderful research may you carry on bringing out such wonderful books to read wish you all the best take care thank you so much thank you for coming it was a pleasure